so long as the individual patients aren't going to have out of pocket costs other than mm -hmm. whatever the deductible mm -hmm. is with their right. insurance carrier. Because um, we're not going to go chase them for the difference if the, if the insurance coverage doesn't co cover anymore. <coughs> I agree. I agree with Steve also on that. As long as the individuals, but, but I, I do just want to make a comment because I find this interesting. Where we're boosting the cost of the insurance companies, which we all feel is fine, but then next month we're going to be complaining about our insurance going up. Right. It's it's. If they yeah. give us a no, break. No, on I mean the rate, really, we'll, we'll, we'll give them a break on here. Yeah. No. 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 I'm, I'm just saying that. You know. Um, I mean, they're not giving us but, any break. Yeah. No, I'm in favor of doing it, but I'm just saying that, you know. Well, our rates, my understanding, having listened to this gentleman, that our rates in terms of ambulance billing has been so inadequate for a number of years compared to other communities that I, I think we've lost out in revenue as a result of this. This is just bringing us in line with yeah, yeah, most, oh yeah, no, most no. other communities. So, so it wouldn't uh, stand. Yeah. Joe, Joe's absolutely right. I mean, in years <coughs> past, I kind of pushed back on, on increasing the rates because to me, every incremental increase we, we push here just gets pushed mm -hmm. back on the, uh, the rate payers in the form of premium increases uh, over the years. We're just adding uh, insult to injury. Uh, but as you pointed out, this, uh, this is a very small portion of health care costs. And at this point, I don't think we're going to solve it locally. As no, a, as far no, as the, the health care concerns. No, we're not. So, no, I think we've been on the losing end. Uh, this is only bringing us in line with most other communities. That's although, what although you know, given the chief is due and, and previous chiefs, uh, they, they've committed, done a pretty good survey in the past of, of area communities. Yeah, I can. Uh, remember. Not so much. Not maybe not chief. so much. No, no, no. Well, I mean, no. That's what we rely upon every year. Uh, they've done a pretty good job, and incrementally, they've been moving these things up over the years quite mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, we've taken some some pretty good leaps uh, over the years, and it, it wasn't done in a vacuum. Uh, we may not have been keeping up with the private ambulance service uh, uh, rates, and again, we don't have ALS, so that we didn't have the same opportunity to bill it at, at the upper rates. But uh, I think over here, overall, I think we've been pretty good in keeping pace with it. But uh, based upon the information that the subcommittee has garnered, why not? You know? Mr. Mr. Chair, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, with, you know, with regard with Joe, and I understood what he said, you know, if, if we raise our rates, then the insurance company comes back and says, well, you know, we're, we're paying more, we have to increase your rate that much more, uh, except for the fact that uh, we've been paying, as the Chair said, uh, so far under, uh, below what the normal rate is. They've been paying these numbers out anyway, and we haven't gotten the benefit of a reduction. All right, so... <laughs> So the, 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 uh, if, if by chance it were to come up as an argument uh, by the insurance company, that's how I would approach it. So it seems like it's, they're already paying it, so that there's no increase to their bottom line. No, no, I'm not, excuse me, I mean, I'm not saying our rates are going to go down or up because we, what right. we do, I'm saying throughout the state of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. if this is done. And everyone's going to cry about the rising cost of insurance, and of course the insurance rates are going to go up throughout the state if this was done. That's that's. I mean, I mean, I mean, we're this big in this whole scheme. That's right. what I'm saying. No, I'm not saying it's going to affect our rates in the town of North Reading. I'm just saying in general. I'm in favor. I have no problem with the rates. My understanding, we can't adopt it though until we adopt until, the new right, policy. Right. So we have to finally see that. <laughs> it's point. a work in progress. Right. Excuse me, just in relation to the other um, things on the menu here. Yep. Uh, you're not suggesting anything else? <clears throat> no, the gentleman who uh, talked with us said if we put our rates at a certain level and not chase all the other parts, it'll be very hard for them to bump it out. We have to code everything exact when you do a billing and so forth. That's how he explained it to us. Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier just to put in one bill Submit it, and you get your payment. So, just so you're not talking about the menu here. You're no. talking about eliminating. No. Eliminating the menu. At this point, eliminate the menu, and only be four rates, except for the mileage. There's a BL, two BLS assets. rates, <laughs> two ALS rates, and a mileage rate. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 Mr. Yule, just before you. Mr. Oh, Peter, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, that's okay. okay. Uh, you know, in looking at uh, some of these numbers, the, the, there's a zero costs uh, paid by Medicare for the defibrillator right. and so on, 
and yet we have these numbers here, like three hundred dollars for the uh, Medicare won't pay us anything. So they won't pay us anything. Right. So, so we can't collect on that. Is that what you're saying? We get nothing on that. Based Medicare on what we'll the way anything. we're the way we're writing this 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 uh, right. uh, uh, policy here, we yep. can't collect. We can provide the service, but we can't collect on it well, because right. no. The way I read it, Medicare doesn't pay regardless of what we do. Medicare is not paying on those anyway. Right. Right. On the right. Medicare call. Right. Medicare won't pay it. But on current rates, currently what we're doing is we have the a la carte. Right. Under the new rates, we're eliminating the a la carte and just going with a flat rate. I understand. With that. the mileage charge. So how would we, would that allow us to collect on something like that? Is, is that what that's no, translating now. to? Not now, but if we do it all as a one lump sum. I, if, if someone gets a, a cardiac monitor, which is what, $300, yep. all right, a, we can't collect, uh, Medicare won't pay it, so therefore if, if the person uh, who needed that service uh, uh, doesn't have to pay it because <coughs> Medicare won't, uh, but if they have an insurance policy uh, and they submit it, hopefully they will pay it, right. correct? I mean, that, that, that's, yes. that's why we have these numbers here. Yep. Okay. In the past, that's how we've done it. Okay. The now you're gonna roll it into one. The gentleman that came into us told us that this is how we should be doing our billing. Right, but have we done any analysis as to how much uh, our billing, you know, comes off the menu here, you know, uh, below the, the mileage section? You know, how much revenue is generated on a percentage basis, you know, from that? I mean, I, I know the guy came in and said this is the way we, this is the way we should go, but have we done any internal internal analysis as far as, I mean, I don't even know what percentage of our, of our ridership is, is Medicare. Do we know? Uh, 25 left, between 71208 and 63209. Uh, 25 was Medicaid, 62 was Blue Cross, 97 was other insurance, and 126 was Medicare. So 150 of the 329 were Medicare patients. So we're less than 50% was Medicare or Medicaid. Okay, so, so less than. We can leave the other, the other part in. I don't have any problem with that either. And bill out each one of these caveats. Well, I mean, before before we go ahead and eliminate it, I'd like to know what is it what is it generated for us? You know, in other words, so you've got more than fifty percent of your fifty uh, percent of your ridership here has private insurance, which generally pays. Right. And again, some of some of that is less than fifty percent is Medicaid and Medicaid, but some of those people also had private insurance. Right. Some of those, some of that less than 50% still had private insurance on top of their, their Medicare. And I, again, I don't know what that is. So therefore, I would assume that while you've got your Medicare rate on your, on your, you know, your BLS ride to the hospital, the other stuff got paid. You know, if they had a cardiac monitor, sure, they got 435, but then you got 300. We won't get paid on the cardiac monitor because we don't we don't provide that service. Okay, well, what, we're, we're whatever just, we provide, whatever we provide, I'm using that as an example. But whatever we we provide in here, um, you know, you provide oxygen. Yep. Okay, yep. so you would have charged the extra two hundred dollars, and you would have got paid yep. for it through the supplemental insurance. Um, you know, so I, I don't I don't know that we have the necessary I analysis. I can go back and have the, the gentleman pull up all the information for us. Do you understand what I'm driving at? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm off base in asking. I'm just trying to nope. understand a little bit right. more as to what, what makes up the numbers as to what we've collected in percentage-wise. Again, if we're going to raise the uh, the minimum rates on the basic services, you know, so be it. But uh, you know, does it really? What he try? What he tried to do was he evidently what he do he does is he rolls it all into one instead of going up and doing each one individually. Mm -hmm. And he goes for the most bang for the for the buck. Yeah, for for those for, for those people that just get a ride because you got a broken leg and you haven't given them anything else, you know, you're gonna get the twelve exactly. fifty. You're gonna get the twelve fifty. Exactly. You know, whereas before we get six twenty five. Right. But I don't know what the trade off has been. I mean, how many rides do we have that just have the basic, uh, no other, nothing else off the menu? Right. I mean, are you saying like say for oxygen as an example, if, if only five percent of our riders have required oxygen. 
uh, well, I mean, historically, they can go back. They can go back and historically and look and see what you know what percentage. Well, you can do it by percentages. Transports divided into before we, receipts. Before we, and again, I don't mind mucking with the rates, but before we, yeah, we're not before, we're before we're we eliminate, to, before yeah. we eliminate, you know, half the menu. Let's make sure that the that people aren't ordering it. Chief, do you have with you tonight what uh, over the last fiscal year what revenues were in transport, non Medicare, non Medicaid? I have a list of uh, trip dates between 7 1 and 6 30. 0809. 0809. Okay. That's all I've. He did, he has I got divided the last six it all months. out and then, yeah, how many Medicare patients we do, what we've collected, total revenues, and so forth. This will be helpful. At least you can take this and just divide total collected into right. total transport and you get your average receipt. Right. Average billing was $912 and so forth to a total of 56000 on the Blue Cross Blue Shield. This isn't the specific information that Mr. O'Leary asked for, but I think no. it tells you that it tells about $300 less. Who's paying us and how many people are paying and what they're paying. Right. This Blue Cross is Medicaid, there's other insurance, Medicare, and then a patient pays by itself. There was 19 patients who paid their own, 126 Medicare, 97 other insurance, 25 Medicaid, 62 Blue Cross, and going across the top. An average pay, if you take the top three, the average receipt, the average bill was $661.36. That's helpful. The average, I'm sorry, the average what receipt? Average receipt, right. The average receipt. The average bill that we sent out and received was 600. So this is, these are, this is the average receipt. Right. And you just keep Medicare separate. I'm sorry? Medicare is? Is separate, yeah. So that's not factored into the average. It's not factored. Only those three are. Because that would drop the average. Yeah. Well, wouldn't Medicaid drop the average as well? I mean, yeah, would does Medicaid look at it differently? Absolutely. It's paid at 254. Right. <clears throat> I can, so I can basically, put it all so, so this is based on, and you don't have the private pay in there either. Oh. Yeah, patient no, pay. Blue 19. No, I know, but that's not in your average. No. There were just 19 patients. I don't have that. Right. Oh, you can do that, though. You can divide it out. No, just, you know, just look in the... So the average is based upon 184 transports. It's the 3219 less the 126 less the 19. Right. right? That's the average, yeah. The average rate top three. Okay. I just, yeah, I just, yeah, just need a little more analysis, I think, sure. just to be comfortable with Oscar. that. Chief, thank you. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> uh, we also have, along with, while, while the Chief is here, also. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we put together a, uh, a motion for the board to consider um, involving a uh, notice of intent and the, uh, the motivation behind this is, is in terms of requesting filling of our uh, present vacancy in the department with 
thought of the